What's going on guys? Aaron here from Departures Capital and we're here with Rich TV Live. It's been a while, Rich. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. Just happy to be collabing with you finally once again. And we're talking about the, the most important, the most important, exciting thing today, can it be growth earnings? Yeah, so, uh, exciting time. Yeah, exactly. So first, um, I just wanted to briefly go through um, it's a Seeking Alpha article, but basically just saying what the estimates are, and then we can talk and see how we feel about them. So I'll just quickly share my screen. Can you see everything good there? Yep. All right. So Canopy Growth Q3 20, 2018. 2018. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? 2018 earning preview, February 13th. All right. This was put out a day ago. So scheduled to announce Q3 results on Thursday, February 14th after the market close. So the consensus EPS estimate is negative 12 cents per share and the revenue estimate is 62 million. And over the last one year, they've beaten 0% zero zero of the time and they've beaten revenue 75% of the time. So we will just go back to us and yeah. How do you feel about the uh, numbers that they're supposed to put out or at least the an analysts are um, thinking that they're going to do and yeah, how do you think their quarter is going to be? I think that those numbers are pretty accurate. I've heard as high as 84 million. Yeah. I believe it could be higher than their 62 million that they're estimating. Yeah. If they get 60 million or 70 million or 80 million, that'll, that'll be a record. So anything over 54.2 million, which is what Aurora reported, I think mm -hmm. will be a record for the industry. So from that perspective, I think it's great. Um, you know, there I've always called cannabis growth, the LeBron James mm -hmm. of cannabis stocks. They've always been that consistent company. Bruce Linton is very consistent as a CEO and yep. just kind of expect great things from them. And they don't ever seem to disappoint. So I expect some big numbers. I expect a big number. No, for yeah. sure. But um, last quarter, didn't they have, weren't their earnings a, a little bit disappointing? That's why the analysts, uh, they advised downwards this time to have a little bit more realistic expectations or what was it? Because I believe last quarter, didn't the stock drop about 11%? Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's uh, started to climb back up. So I don't know. I think it, at the end of the day, I believe that a lot of these companies price to earning ratios are way out of whack. Yeah, so I agree. I don't think you can really look at any of these stocks in the cannabis sector and say, okay, what are they going to do based on the <laughs> price to earning ratios? Because none of them are really yeah. operating at a normal wall street number. None of them. Exactly. No, exactly. It's true. So I think you can kind of throw that out the door, um, throw it out the window. I think this is just purely like, are they going to beat Aurora? This is what this is. This is a, <laughs> this is a competition for me for sure. between Canopy Growth and Aurora. And who's going to be number one? And there's a fight between number one and number two. And it's, it's Aurora and Canopy. And they're kind of in a league of their own. There's nobody really in their revenue category. Mm -hmm. So... As long as they beat Aurora, they're still king of the hill. And I think that's what this is about more than anything else. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, one thing else I was talking about on my live streams and stuff where whether they make 50 million, 60 million, 70 million these quarters, I mean, what, what a lot of people really care about is outlook and are they executing in terms of their plans to grow and all that stuff down the road, right? At the like, end, as long, yeah, as long as they keep executing on their plan, uh, I don't see any reason why they're not going to be a huge success. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but Canopy and Aurora are both two great companies. Obviously, we like them both. So tell me a little bit about your hat. Yeah, this is a hat I got at the uh, Cannabis Conference here in Vancouver. It looks better on the back, so I just wanted to show you guys. Canna. I think the symbol is Love. L-O-V-E. It's a brand new IPO. I believe this nice. is the one. Um, I got a whole what do they do? Here. So, pardon me? I don't know too much about the company. What do they do? You know what? There's like hundreds of companies there and it was a brand new IPO and I need to do more research before I can actually give you a full synopsis on them. I was yeah, just of hats. And yeah, you know them. what? There's, there's so many of these like new IPOs coming out left, right and center. So 
like I get a lot of requests for, oh, check out this stock, check out this stock. But it's just like, yeah, I, I love to check it out, but uh, always do your research, guys. So if there, there, if there's so many new companies, you know, I had a, I had a very interesting uh, one to bring up. SHMP, Natural Shrimp. Yes. yes. What do you think about, about that company and their recent, you know, run up from like a couple cents all the way up to almost a dollar back down to 38 cents? I haven't checked what we're trading at today, but it's just been a wild run. Yeah, so Natural Shrimp is a company that I actually brought to everyone around a penny. And I did a video about it and they were up, at that point, they're already up thousands of percent. And then wow. I went to the Dominican Republic and I kind of forgot about them. And then I came back and then they just went on a tear. Yeah. Um, and they went all the way to 84 cents. Yeah. And I made a song called FOMO is Real. And I <laughs> talked about Natural Shrimp in the song with Ill Kid's help, obviously. I'm not the one singing, it's Ill Kid. And yeah. it's one of my friends here in Vancouver. And I heard it, by the way. I heard yeah, the great song. artist. And we talked about natural shrimp in the song because I just knew, I was like, the FOMO is real. Like, you want to buy it, you know it's going to crash. Yeah. You don't know it's going to crash, so the FOMO is real. So we talked about it, and I didn't buy it. And everyone's like, are you going to buy it? I'm like, no. And people were buying, and they're making money, and the people were buying, and they're making money. And then all of a sudden, you know, it went from a penny to 84 cents, and then off the cliff, there it goes. And today it was at 30 cents, right? So... Yeah. FOMO is real. So this is why I'm not buying any stocks at a 52 week high. No, and for sure. In for our sure. community, we want to buy stocks at a 52 week low. Yeah, exactly. I, want at a 52 week low. I don't want them at a 52 week high. I want them at a 52 week low. If, if we can buy them at a 52 week low, we feel like we're going to have a chance to win. If we're buying a stock at a 52 week high, it's suicide. Now, if you want a momentum trade, that's fine. That's different. You can buy at any point in time, but make sure you put a 10% stop loss because exactly. it's very risky. Like we saw what happened with shrimp. If you bought at 84 cents, you're pretty much in a big trouble right now. You know, you're in big trouble. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, this, I would not be going long anywhere close to a 52 week high. <laughs> no, no. For sure, for sure. So with this quarter in the cannabis sector being, you know, the first quarter where we've got a full quarter worth of rec sales and all that kind of stuff. How do you think the numbers have been so far and then, you know, what moving forward into 2019, how do you feel about the sector? I think the sector is maturing, you know, we're starting to see a little bit more st stability, if you want to say, kind of. I mean, we still got a lot of volatility, but I think that things are starting to mature is what you could say. Yeah, I think that what happened was the price to earning ratios were out of whack. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was they came down after legalization. Yep. And what happened was the revenues were growing while the price to earning ratios were starting to come down. So we all did a lot of videos talking about how we thought it was the bottom and we were right. And they all just came up. They all hit a bottom right around Christmas yep. and it exploded after Christmas and it didn't stop. I went to the Dominican Republic mid-January, came back end of January, it still didn't stop. So the whole month of January was really, really hot, which is the total opposite of what happened the year before. So the market is reacting very different than what it has in the past. And yep. I think what's happening is we had an explosion. And in my opinion, I think we're going to have a retraction now. Yeah, a bit of a pullback. Yeah, Thank because you. we had an explosion. And that's kind of what this market does. It has these pullbacks. So... I think we're going to have a little bit of a pullback um, and then it'll be followed by another explosion and then <laughs> by another pullback because that's what this market seems to want to do. So when it goes down, that's when you got to really be hunting and buying, you know, when you yeah, see exactly. $5, when you see Aurora at $5, that's when you want to buy them. Yeah, exactly. And then Aurora it's goes to 15. It did it twice in 2018. It mm -hmm. went to 15 and went down to five twice. Mm -hmm. so as an investor, I'm like, okay, let me just hunt it when it's at $5, five, six, seven dollars $7. I'll buy at that range. And then when it goes up to 15, I'll sell it or anything over 10, you can sell it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, any recent trades, you know, that you've done or any companies that you're just simply looking at, not, not saying you're recommending, but any companies that you're, that are just simply, you know, in the crosshairs, Anything yeah, like that? Cineva, Cineva had some big news today and they exploded today. I think they're up like 12, 13% last time. Yes, I, I would love to talk about that because I just bought Cineva last week. Very good. So, well, 
you're up then because they're 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 doing well and they're having a good day today and they just announced some big news so <clears throat> Saniba, I, I believe T God, I believe Medmen, I believe all three mm. of those are going to be monsters and they're going to do very well. Um, obviously, Aurora and Afria are always two that I'm always looking at and always think are good buys. Yeah. Um, I like Eve and Co as a smaller company that is really getting my attention right now. Eve. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, you know what? Here, let me do this real quick. I'm just going to share my screen so that you can see that this is my basically cannabis stock portfolio list. Just obviously don't own all these ones, but um, a lot of these stocks are we're watching and you're talking about Evenco. Evenco is currently trading at 29 cents. So you said you're watching this one. I've been watching this one too. I don't know too much about it. Um, if you got they're, a little more really knowledge. Big. They're really big and they're undervalued and they have huge growing potential and capacity. So, I believe that they're going to be a dollar stock easily. So nice. this could be one of those sleeping giants that I haven't really talked about much, but I'm going to start. Another one is Labs. If you could pull out Labs. I oh, pretty yes, yes. Um, labs I've been asked a ton about. Yeah, Metafarm Labs. So Metafarm Labs. I predicted as one of my top picks for, look at that, eh? Up 7% today again. Nice. I it as one of my top picks for February 2019, my sixth top pick. Yep. And uh, they perform very well. And yeah, the stock's doing very well. The members, Sabino, out of Winnipeg. And he told me, Rich, you got to get in. And he told me about like $1.80. Wow. 90. And uh, yeah, it's up to $2.65. <laughs> there, was, there was one other company, and I've been asked about it so many times. Chiron or Kiron or however you say it, Life Sciences. Yeah, Kiron Life Sciences, K-H-R-N. Yeah. KHRNF in America, KHRN in Canada. I've been asked about it a lot as well. There's a lot of people that are really into the stock. Oh, yeah. Um, seems like uh, Midas Letter talks about them a lot. So, you know, we're just talking about buying at 52 week highs, though. Yeah. So, but some, there are some instances of companies that just have momentum that you have to, you have to be prepared to buy. So, yeah. like, labs, labs is one that, is, is going to be a giant. So you may not see it again at $2. Same with Chiron Life Sciences. You might not see it again at $2. Yeah. Some of these stocks are going and, and there's nothing you can do to stop them. So you may not see a dip. You may want to wait for a dip, but you might not see a dip. And that's the thing, right? Like that is true. Group. Like we waited for Kronos Group. If you waited for a dip, then you're going to be waiting for a while because Kronos Group has just been absolutely on fire. I mean, yeah. Kronos I says, we can take a look at Kron. We can take a look at the charts. Quickly. Yeah, like if you look at the five-year chart on Kron, it's a thing of beauty. It's like one of the best. 2776 as of today, the five-year chart. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, you did, not get, you did not get much of a pullback. I was talking to people about it when it was like under two bucks, you know? So I remember talking to people about it, and this baby's just been just a monster. And it's actually holding on to the majority of its gains above 25, which is, which is amazing. Giant. So yeah, yeah. I really love it. So there's been so many good companies and so many examples of success stories mm -hmm. and we're going to continue to find them. And that's the beauty of having platforms like yours and platforms like ours and, and collaborating, working together, having all of our eyes looking for these winners. We're going to continue to find more and more. And stay tuned because we've got more coming. And, you know, every single day we're going to keep bringing you guys winners every single day. Yep. That's what we do. That's what we love to do. And we appreciate all the feedback from our subscribers and our community. You know, it's not always just even us bringing those stocks. Sometimes like a subscriber will recommend one and we do research together. And that's what I love. It's not just, you know, we're, we're a growing community. So that's what I put a lot of emphasis on too. It's true. It's true. You know, Everyone's like, oh, Rich, you're taking credit for, you know, your community's pay.